What's going on, everybody? Josh Engelman here for Stochastic.com, back again with my NBA DFS contenders on FanDuel for Friday, May 5th. Now, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman. And the biggie, sign up for the lineup generator. You see the banner on the top of the screen. Click the link in the description. Here's the deal. This is what we do. We create thousands of lineups on the back end. We get rid of all the junk, and we present the rest to you. Click save if you like it, click discard, another one just pops right up. If you like balance builds, chalky builds, contrarian builds, you can choose whatever you want. You can lock a player in, you can swap players around, you can export up to 20 via CSV. It is that easy, and now if you click that link, it's less than five bucks for your first week. If you don't like it, cancel, you get out of there, it's gonna cost you like $4.48. That's, I think you can handle that for trying out something that I believe is gonna make you money. Now. We're going to round out the bottom of my top 10 with James Harden, Al Horford, Bruce Brown, Nikola Jokic, and Devin Booker on the outside looking in. Who will be my favorites? My top five plays for today? It's time to find out. In first, at number five, I've got KCP. He's shooting guard only, 4,800, projected for 22. The goal's 26, optimal lineup 41% of the time. Played big minutes in game two. I'm going 35 minutes here for KCP, but there's certainly a ceiling bigger than that number. Now, he's not a good per minute guy. I got him at 0.63 fantasy points per minute. But with this position and the fact that he is as cheap as he is with the minutes, it starts to look a little bit more interesting. Sometimes you just have to make a lineup work. 10 points, 13% usage, three boards, two and a half assists, two stocks. The stocks are the biggie. If KCP can get involved defensively and get two stocks, three stocks, or even have an outlier stock day, that makes it so much easier for him to pay off 4,800. That's why we see him get to the number five spot. At number four, I've got the Anthony Melton. This one's weird, but it's a price and position thing. He has an MPE, and that is very, very big on a two-game slate because now that he can be in four spots instead of two, it changes things. Point guard, shooting guard, 4,300, projected for 19, goals 23 and a half, optimal lineup 44% of the time. Again, he just fits. I only gave him 24 minutes, he had a big game one, less so in game two, but nothing was really good for Philly. He's a .8 fantasy point per minute guy, eight points, three boards, two assists, a stock and a half. This is just another spot where we're trying to find value, where we're trying to find a place to slot in a decent point per minute guy at a position that it's either going all the way to the top or all the way to the bottom. We take a bit of a step up in tier here. We go to DeAndre Ayton at number three. He's center only, but 6,700. Projected for 35, the goal is 35. He's in the optimal lineup 52% of the time. I went 34 minutes here for Ayton. Maybe he plays a little bit more with no Chris Paul, just because you want to rely more on the guys that matter most. He's a little over a fantasy point per minute guy. 17 points, 11 boards, two assists, and a stock and a half. If they want to save their season, I think they need more out of DeAndre Ayton today. And at 6,700, I think it's more than worth the risk. In at number two, I'm going to Derek White. Uh, it's been more of a Malcolm Brogdon series, but Derek White is now 4,900. He has the MPE, point guard, shooting guard. He's projected for 24 and a half. The goal is just 26 and a half. He's in the optimal line at 57% of the time. This is a price and position thing for a guy that's still starting for the Celtics. 32 minutes. Now, I am pessimistic about his rates here. He's about a 0.8 fantasy point per minute guy. We're talking 12 points, four boards, three assists, a stock and a half. I love this price for Derek White. No reason he can't rebound here, have a slightly better game than he did earlier. Like in game one, he was a ghost. I think he can recover here. And at 4,900, it doesn't feel all that risky. Don't forget to check out the lineup generator, $4.48, if you scan the QR code on the screen right now or click the link in the description. Number one contender, and it's not even close, that's gonna be Aaron Gordon, 67% optimal. That's 10% higher than Derek White. He's power forward only, but he's 5,800, projected for 32, the goal's 31. He's in the optimal lineup 67% of the time. He's playing massive minutes. I gave him 37 here, and it's 18% usage. It's 15 and a half points, seven and a half boards, three assists, maybe a steal, maybe a block, close to two aggregate. But we're talking about a guy that's like a 0.85 fantasy point per minute, dude. We know that Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic are gonna dominate the touches, but if Aaron Gordon is going to play this much 
it becomes much easier to pay off a $5,800 price tag. There is no better play today on FanDuel than Aaron Gordon. Alrighty, folks, that will do it. Those are my NBA DFS contenders on FanDuel for Friday, May 5th. DraftKings version is around here somewhere, so check it out. Good luck tonight, everybody. Win some money. I'm back again Monday morning for another edition of The Contenders.